Yes, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really one hot day that we're having today, Tuesday, June the 2nd. But hey, you know, glory to God that we have life, that His Spirit is with us, that His peace, that His love is with us. And uh, we should always be joyful about anything and everything that happens around us. That is for sure. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing a, a study, a meditation about how we as Christians can stay strong. Um, how can I be strong as a Christian, uh, as a son of God? And how can anyone uh, basically find that strength uh, to keep surviving? And basically, we need strength in, in order to overcome so many obstacles that we might find in life. Uh, we need a lot of strength, that, that is for sure. And that strength comes from God. So let's just make sure that we always strive to get it. We always strive. We always persevere uh, trying to get this, the, this particular strength that on, only the Lord can give us. Um, also, I want to make sure that when, whenever we say, whenever you feel uh, that your spiritual life is not a, at a level that you feel that it should be, basically when you say, hey, uh, in the spiritual sense, I feel like I'm falling. Well, even though you feel like that, don't give up. I'm telling you right now, do not give up. And if you think that just because you're feeling some kind of temptation, that's okay. Being tempted doesn't mean that you're falling for sin. Temptation is not sin. So even, even Jesus was tempted. So this is not sin. This happens to everyone. So remember, um, even though you feel temptation, don't act on it. If you're not acting on it, you're not in bad standing with Jesus. You're just living your life in this world that is basically full of those temptations. Um, so one point, so I just want to give you some ideas on how to feel the strength of God in your life. And this is all something that I need, something that everyone needs. We all, all of us should be doing. Uh, I highly recommend to get to know your own self. Basically, know your own weaknesses. Like, for example, I ask God all the time, if I forget something, please remember me. Remember, somehow, some way, my weaknesses. Um, like, for example, if you, you, if you know you have a weakness towards alcohol, towards drugs, towards women, towards men, you have a bad temper, you have a bad attitude, um, you have no patience. Uh, those are all weaknesses. So when you know your own weaknesses, then you know how to pray about them. Because you're clear about your needs. You're clear about what God needs to be doing for you. So it's actually good that you keep track of your weaknesses. And little by little, when you gain strength in your spiritual life, becomes a mature one, then those weaknesses will little by little go away. So always have patience. Always have patience. Be patient with yourself. If you're patient with yourself, you're going to be patient with others. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, so also, I highly recommend that you cooperate. Cooperate with God. Rely on Jesus himself. Rely on Jesus Christ because he will help you overcome weaknesses. Know what I mean? Um, he is stronger than anyone out there. There's no one in the spiritual sense that is stronger than Jesus. So please always be on his side. Please always communicate with him. Please always pray to him. Please always share your deep emotions, your deep feelings with him, Jesus Christ, because he will give you the strength. Um, and he lives in our hearts. Never forget that. 
So that particular day when you were like, okay, I, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I understand that I need to repent from my sins, and I feel it in my heart that I have in my heart that I have repented from my sins, then that's when Jesus actually enters your heart and lives in it. He comforts you, he comforts me, he comforts anyone that has accepted him as his Lord um, and Savior. So I want to read to you a Bible script, uh, verse right here. I don't want to just read it. I want for you to see it. So I'm going to put it on the screen so that way you and I can read it at the same time. And this is going to be in the book of Galatians. So this is the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. In verse 23. You see it on the screen, right? Chapter 5 from the book of Galatians, 22-23. And we read the word in the name of the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. And it says, verse 22, but the, all, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So once again, when, when you pray to God and you know your weaknesses, then pray to Him and say, God, my Lord Jesus Christ, I want these fruits. I want the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Please show me how to acquire love, joy, peace, patience. And it's okay if you read the Bible while you pray. It's absolutely okay because that's His Word. And you basically don't want to make a mistake or you don't want to forget something. So you're like, yes. What this verse 22 says, I want it for my life. I want that love. I want that joy. I want that peace. I want that patience. I want that kindness, that goodness, that faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So that's another way for, for us to keep a very strong spiritual life. When we are able to live what Galatians chapter 5 says, when others can see those attributes in us, especially God sees that in us, then we know we're strong in the spirit. Um, remember, we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient to God. And God will manifest himself either through prayer, by reading the, the Bible, or by going to service at church and you hear the, the war being preached, that's God talking to us. So always be obedient. If you feel it in your heart that this is for you, if you feel it in your heart that the war being preached is for you, then please make sure that you're obedient and you act on it. And if you feel that there's something that you need to change, make sure you change it. If you feel that this is for me, God is talking about me, then be humble enough to say, I needed this. I truly, I truly did. I needed this. And that's when basically you become stronger in the spirit because now you're being obedient to God and to what his word says, his commands. Um, uh, so whenever you go to a church, if you happen to go to a church, yes, always be obedient to your pastors and, and to the elders of that particular church that you go to. Also remember, never get discouraged. Do not get discouraged. You never need to give up and you should not be giving up. Again, and, and this is something that we always, all of us, um, we need to just basically tell each other, I am not giving up. Giving up is not for me. Giving up is not an option for me. 
I am a son and a daughter of God. He already gave his life for me, and Jesus is giving me strength. So never allow that kind of vocabulary to come out of your mouth. We are not giving up. Just like he never gave up on us, we're not giving up on our own life. Remember, remember a baby. If you have a baby, I mean, you should know it's better. Like, remember how babies, they, they start crawling and they, they want to take a step. They they stand up, they hold on to something, and they take one step at a time, but they never give up. They try. They keep trying. They keep trying every day, every day. And then you're like, oh, when are you going to walk? And then a week later, a day later, two days later, you know, every baby is different. But the whole point is babies don't give up. They just don't know what that is. They are very consistent. So they take one step at a time, another step until you see them running all over the place. That, that's just basically the way we should be in our spiritual life. Same way. We're going to be like, you know, very strong in the spirit, which is what God says. Um, I want to read to you another scripture in the book of Acts. So let me go ahead and share the screen again with you so we can both uh, read it at the same time. So I'm going to be reading the book of Acts. It's going to be chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 8. And it says like this. In my first book, I'm sorry. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What I want for you here to always remember is what Jesus said. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So that was a huge promise from Jesus Christ to us. He promised us that we will receive power through the Holy Spirit. And we're going to witness unto him. We're going to tell others who Jesus is. That power is going to make us talk. That power is going to make us go and read the Bible every single day. That uh, A daily reading, basically. That power is going to make us pray even more. Pray for others. Show love to others. So, Jesus, basically, is the baptizer. Um he promised the Holy Spirit. And remember, the Holy Spirit baptism is it's not just one thing that happens once in a lifetime. No. Once you receive that touch of the Holy Spirit, 
we should always strive to feel it again. So as you continue to, to keep a close relationship with the Lord, we should always strive to keep uh, to feel the touch of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, and that way, you and I, we are going to receive more of him, more of his blessings, more, even more. And that's what's going to keep us strong, very strong when we actually look for that power. Um, so let's go to some other uh, Bible verses that I want to share here. Because basically what I share is the word of God. I'm not talking about my own self. I'm not talking about what I do, but I'm just talking about what Jesus is letting us know that we should do and how we should act. So we're going to be reading in the book of John. John chapter 13, verse 34 to verse 35. So this is John chapter 13, verse 34 to verse 35. And it says, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So when we are obedient, we're going to be listening to his commands, the Lord's commands. And we're going to act on them. And this is something very crucial right here. He says that he's given us a new commandment. We're not talking about the law. We're not talking about rituals. We're talking about a commandment that Jesus said was new. And that we need to love each other. Love everyone around you. No barriers in between. No colors in between. No sizes in between, no cultures in between. He says, love each other. Just as he loves us, we should love others. So once you feel in your spirit that you're right there, that you're loving everyone around you, you know you're living in the spirit. You're not living in the flesh, but you're living in the spirit because you understood God's love. And not only that you understand his love, but you're also acting on it. You're providing that love to others. So very important. Love everyone. Because others are going to see in you something different. They're going to see that you are his disciple. They're going to see that you are not attacking anyone, uh, that you're not thinking of worldly uh, thoughts and philosophies, but that you're following what God says. Love everyone around you. So let's go to the following scripture. We're going to be reading John. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. And it says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So once you understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, everything, he's the only way to go to heaven. He's basically saying, you want to know the Father, you need to know me. You want to get to the Father, you need to get to me first. You need to know Jesus. You need to have, we all need to have a very deep relationship with Jesus because he is the way. He is truth. He is life for all of us. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we all understand what he's telling us here. Let's go ahead and read the following one. This is going to be 
John chapter 14, and it's going to be verse 13 to 14. And he says, you can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So when you pray, remember, you pray to praise God. You pray to show gratitude about what he's done in your life. You pray because we have, we have needs. We also pray because we have needs. But when you do, no matter which prayer you're on, remember, always ask in the name of Jesus Christ. He's telling us that right here in John 14. He says, ask for anything in my name, meaning his name, in Jesus Christ, and he will do it. He will do it. Because that will bring glory to the Father. So when you pray, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, and whatever you're praying uh, is about. So let's not forget about that. The following scripture is going to be the uh, same chapter, John 14, but this is verse 15. And it says, if you love me, meaning that if you love Jesus, obey my commandments. Very important. You want to have a very strong Christian life? You need to obey what Jesus says. We all need to obey every single day what jesus is telling us he's very clear about this particular commandment he says it right there if you love me obey my commandments and huge commandment which is real was to love everyone around you love each other look what's happening in the world right now look at all this uh, people, you know, looting, stealing. Look how cops are acting. You know, you, you know, you've seen the news. I don't want to go, you know, that much deep into it, but you've seen what's happening all around us. And, and this is because we have not understood yet that if we obey what God is telling us, if we obey His commandments. Things are going to get much, much better. If we can just learn to love each other, then things are going to get way better. But that's not going to happen unless we obey him. That's what he's saying. If you're saying that you love me, you're going to obey my commandment. Just basically, an example will be our parents. If, if, if you say that you love your mother and that you love your father, you're going to obey them. You know what I mean? As long as they don't ask you to do something illegal, but in general, their advice was good for our lives. So I cannot say I love my parents, but I never obey them. That just makes no sense whatsoever. And also God says that to us, love me, obey my commandments. Uh, let's read now, same chapter. So John 14, we're gonna be reading verse 27. And he says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So this is going to empower our spiritual life, our daily lives. Once we understand that it is peace that we desire can only come from God. Jesus is the only one that will give you this peace, this precious peace that we need. We cannot find it in worldly things. We cannot find it by eating a lot. We cannot find them by exercising a lot. We cannot find them by traveling the world. We cannot find it by reading some book that who knows what he's talking about. No. God says it right here. That this is a gift from him 
to me, to you, to us. Peace of mind and peace in our hearts. He's the only one that can give us that peace. So let's understand that. Let's never forget that. Now we're going to the following chapter. And this is chapter 15, verse 5. And it says, Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you cannot do nothing. Let's read that again. Jesus is divine. We are the branches. Those who are close to him and those who have him in their hearts, those are the ones that are going to show fruits, the good attitudes, the good behaviors, the good knowledge, the good wisdom. And he's clear when he says, if you're living your life apart from me, you're not going to be able to do anything whatsoever. Anything whatsoever. That is crucial. 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 And uh, one more verse here. This is from John 15, 18 to 19. And he says, if the world hates you, remember that he hated me first. The world will love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so he hates you. So this understanding is basically for anyone that is out there still playing with worldly things. We cannot anymore because we don't, we don't belong to that anymore. Jesus gave his life for all of us. So we belong to him. That's why we obey him. That's why we shouldn't be entangled in any confusions that you hear out there in the world. They're going to hate us because they don't even understand us anymore. They're like, what happened to you? I used to drink with you. I used to do drugs with you. We used to do this. We used to do that. And then all of a sudden you're like, no. That's basically because the Holy Spirit touched us and changed us for the better. We needed to be changed so that way we can obey Jesus. And if we obey Jesus, we're on the right path, which is the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus was talking about. And we, if we are on that way, then we're on our way to heaven, which is ultimately what should be our goal in life. Flesh, this is going to die. There will be a day. This is all going to die. But the soul will keep on for eternity. And it's up to me and it's up to you to choose where your soul is going to be for eternity. And make sure that it's in heaven. It's in heaven. And the way you're going to make sure that it goes to heaven is by obeying Jesus. By allowing him to live in your heart by allowing him to advise you by allowing the holy spirit to touch you by empowering yourself with the holy spirit every single day thank you so much for listening um if you need any if you have any questions any particular advice uh, you can see right here, um, I'm on Twitter, my username, Strong in Jesus, and I'm also in Instagram. You will find me by my whole name, Javier Jose Hernandez Rosales. And also, if you're not yet uh, going to like a, a particular church, then I highly encourage you that you attend one and if you don't have any idea well i now go to ministerios mas que vencedores 
This is a church in Stone Mountain, Georgia. You can see the address right here. Um, so 4678 Central Drive, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30083. Um, and this right here is our logo. You can see it right here. That's our logo for the church. So be blessed in Jesus Christ. Stay strong. Stay positive. Always follow Jesus' commands. Thank you. Have a great day.